Hi, this is the second video in our series on choosing and buying a van. In part one, which you can click up here to see, we looked at how to pick the right van for you. In this part, we'll look at common scams to avoid getting ripped off when you do make your purchase. All of these are applicable whether you are looking for a bare van to convert, a pre-converted van, or even a commercial motorhome. Don't miss any of our regular videos by hitting that subscribe button now. You can also check out our website at explorevan.uk for more details on our vans, trips and all the products we talk about. First, let's look at some common scams and then we'll come back and look at what you can do to avoid them. There have always been lots of scams around buying vehicles, but vans and motorhomes definitely seem to be a target for scammers at the moment. So let's take a look at how some scams work. Although it's probably not the most common scam, but it is the one that catches the headlines the most, is one where the person trying to sell you a van doesn't even have one to sell. The scammer will try to convince you that it's the perfect van for you, it will probably have a very attractive price, they'll tell you there is no risk, but that lots of people are interested, and you'll need to make a payment direct to them as either a deposit or even full payment to hold the van, or so that they can have it delivered to you. Once you arrive at an unsuspecting person's house to view the non-existent van or you're left waiting on the day for it to arrive, it's then too late. The scammer has disappeared with your money. A more common scam is where the van does exist, you do buy it, but then it turns out to not be what you expected. It might have a major mechanical fault, the mileage could be false, it could have outstanding finance or even have been previously written off and repaired. As vans and motorhomes are stolen in the UK every day, some find their way back onto the market after being cloned as a genuine van. This may be as simple as changing the number plates, but could also involve changing the colour, the vehicle identification number, or the engine and chassis numbers. A scam that possibly has less impact but is still a scam is a dealer passing themselves off as a private seller. The law is slightly different for private sales and doesn't provide the same level of protection for buyers compared to those from a dealer. It means you could end up with a car that's faulty with no warranty and trying to get the car repaired or obtaining a refund can involve a lengthy legal battle. So those are the common scams. Now how can you try to avoid them? Spotting a scam when you're excited about making a new purchase can be difficult. This is what scammers regularly rely on. Try to remain objective and don't be rushed into anything. If something feels too good to be true and you're being pushed into making a decision or do something you're unsure of, you probably best take a step back and reconsider. Before you even contact the seller, unrealistic pricing is a telltale sign. So is the price significantly lower than the market? Here you can see examples of scams where the prices are more than 50% less than the normal price for a similar van. Scammers will often steal pictures from genuine adverts, so by running a Google image search on the picture in the advert you're interested in, it will show you if that picture has been used on any other adverts. If everything looks good and you make contact with the seller, look out for some telltale scenarios that can give them away as a scammer. Hi, I'm phoning about the van you've got for sale. Can you tell me more about it? Uh, yeah, sure. Which one were you interested in in particular? Dealers and scammers are likely to have multiple vehicles being advertised. Genuine private sellers are unlikely to have more than one, so should know which you're talking about without you telling them. Don't be fooled by thinking scammers are going to sound dodgy. They will be well practiced at it and they'll have a great story about why they're selling the van and they'll try and engage with you emotionally. Yeah, we bought the van, uh, obviously we had to convert it to a camper van from, uh, from my wife and I uh, for when we retired. Uh, but she's usually had a hip operation, which means, unfortunately, we can't go away anywhere or anywhere anymore. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking after her full time now. Um, so I just don't have time to work on the van. So, you know, we just, we'd love somebody else to really enjoy it. All oh, right, I see. Well, I'd really like to come and see it. Well, yeah, we could do it at the weekend, but in, in, if I'm being honest, I've already had some uh, other inquiries, some really keen buyers who are ready to just take it away now. Um, but, you know, I would love you to have it. Oh, we really like it, um, but I really want to see it before I pay any money. Yeah, honestly, mate, we've had loads of interest in it, so you'll have to be quick. I just need you to transfer the money to secure it. 
Hi, calling about the van that you've got advertised. I'd love to come and see it. Uh, well, unfortunately, I'm out of the country at the moment. Um, we've recently emigrated. Um, problem is, we didn't manage to sell the van before we left. All oh, right. So, uh, how do we see it then? Yeah, well, we keep the van in storage, and unfortunately, at the moment, we just can't be there to get it. So, what we do, we use a transport company. You can deliver it directly to you. Right. Okay. Not really sure about that. What if it isn't what we want? Yeah. Look, if it's not what you want when it arrives, right, you can just reject it. And you know, we've agreed the whole of this company will bring it back to us, and uh, we'll just refund you. There's absolutely no risk to you. It's quite possible that a genuine seller may say similar things, but I'd suggest if you hear anything along those lines, be extra careful. They will be convincing and they will reassure you, but take a step back and think very carefully about what they're asking you to do. You may be sending a stranger that you can't trace money for something that you haven't even seen. So once you're happy that a vehicle is genuine, what next? Ask questions. This is your chance to quiz the seller. Ask about work done, any breakdowns and accidents. Is it genuine? When you go and see it, check the V5 information and the numbers on the van all match. You can access the information to check if it's valid on the DVLA website. Is the history right? Does the condition of the van look like it's done more miles than the mileage suggests? In the UK, you can check the MOT history online. Check for any previous failures or advisory warnings. Verify with the seller that these have been resolved. You can also check the mileage recorded at each MOT to help validate it. Be careful when you find the websites as there are scam sites that try to charge you for these services. The genuine DVLA ones are free and I've linked them in the video description. If there's any equipment fitted to the van like fridges, heaters or solar, get the seller to demonstrate all the equipment and show you how to use it. Is the van mechanically sound? At a minimum, take it for a test drive and check it over. Look out for too much smoke from the exhaust, oil or fuel leaks, rust and corrosion, and st any strange noises coming from bearings or the gearbox. If you're not confident enough to check these things yourself, take someone with you who is, or pay for a professional survey. If you've got to this stage for a few pounds, you can pay for a HPI check on the vehicle. This will tell you if there's any outstanding finance on it, if it's been written off or scrapped in the past. Some reports will even tell you any recalls on the vehicle and any common faults. Finally, taking everything into account, how do you feel? Do you have a bad feeling about it? If so, walk away. There's plenty of vans out there. If not, and you're happy, then use the information you've gained to do the deal. So that's my thoughts on the common scans and how to avoid them. I hope it's been helpful and you find the perfect van for you. Thanks for watching our video and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share and consider subscribing.